Welcome back <laughs> to this Tuesday, March 27th meeting of the Transition Committee. We are continuing at 7.26 p.m. Next item on the agenda, approval of minutes from March 20th, 2018. Move that we approve the minutes. Okay. Steve has moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Regina has seconded. Uh, I had one discussion item. Yes. That's what I was trying to get to. Okay. I'm trying to be really fast. So on page two in the FY19 budget, there's a discussion regarding the public hearing where, you know, Carrie commented that it is a cleanup bond. It might also be worth mentioning that we had made a decision to phase in the construction costs and the stuff over two years. And that this is the last year we expect to have a change uh, due to that reason. S Steve, do, do you, uh, um, are you okay with that friendly amendment to the? Uh, I would prefer if someone else, yeah, I'm fine with it. And Regina, you, you, are, are you all right with that being added to the minutes? Sure. Yep. It was sad that night, so it's fine. And any other, no? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Less, less carry. Who is um, out of the room just temporarily? Okay. Uh, tuition agreements. Um, Chris. This time's the charm. Well, I can do Chris. it. I just Chris was one there with me, so. Um, I, I I don't rem well. I don't think I'm going to be able to recite the details as well, Joe. You might have you, in putting together the document memorial. We had a meeting, <laughs> him and I, <laughs> with New Ashford, uh, Superintendent Fry. Dillon, and Brenda Fry. And essentially, we indicated uh, that we were open to their requests that we have a graduated um, tuition hike at Lanesboro Elementary, similar to the tuition hike we're using at Mount Greylock, so that it won't go immediately from whatever it was, eight or nine, up to the 17,000 at Lanesboro Elementary, but will go this year, I forget the number, to 12 and change, next year to 14 and change, and then in the third year to the DESI number, whatever that happens to be in the third year. So we indicated that we were agreeable to talk with the committee and, and um, even recommend that. And they were pleased with that. They were the substantive terms. Uh, Joe, I'll rely on you to talk about some of the other, other terms. And I read in the paper that New Ashford School Committee voted two to one to accept, I'll call it a proposal. And so now it's back on our table to talk about it and see whether we're comfortable with it as a committee as a whole. Yes, the other the other changes to what we last saw as far as the tuition agreement um, between us and the town of New Ashford, the other changes were, uh, six. well, within bullet four, um, there's recent DESI published per pupil rate for Mount Greylock Regional School District as of January preceding school year, less transportation special education costs per pupil that are included in that DESI published figure. Um, DESI has recently updated the way that it publishes per pupil figures, and so we need to make sure that we drop out um, uh, costs that are actually borne directly by the town per the agreement, so transportation and special education costs um, that are described later in this agreement. Um, six. So six was essentially the same thing. So what has happened in the past is the tuition rate for New Ashford and Hancock has been the tuition rate in within the tuition agreement and then costs above and beyond that for special ed 504, um, adapted vices, so on and so forth, have been billed back to the town using the school choice bed increment form. Now that Desi and I, uh, Chris Lynch had talked me through the, the per pupil rates include special education teacher costs and um, transportation costs, which they hadn't in the past. So worked with um, the Dupre's and just essentially the, the base rate for the tuition already has their special ed costs. So those costs will no longer be a build back service. What will be build, build back is costs that require us to hire additional staffing because of, so if we took out students and only serviced what was in the service delivery, 
delivery grids of our, our town students, if we had to increase service providers, if we had to purchase additional adaptive equipment, if we had to contract with outside providers, those costs would be billed back to the town or those towns would enter service agreements with the providers um, and the providers would pr do services here. Um, and so we have a, you know, right now, like if we have somebody uh, utilizing Willie Ross for an FM system, the towns of Hancock and New Ashford sign their own service agreements, so it does elimi eliminate um, additional billing for us so there so it works well so that's six from council mm -hmm. uh, Re Regina on that would that then also um, ensure that their special education director was more involved with what was going on with their students that is correct so the we um, as the host schools hold everything in our East Bed system and so um, all the invites will come from us but they should be at the at the table making sure that the services are in there so they'll know what teeters over the fence and they can't deny the service because it's going to teeter us over the fence of staffing but they'll be aware of going back to the town to, that they would bear those costs so and the, and then the the last one is is nine um, which is uh, the term of this agreement shall automatically extend for an additional year at the close of each fiscal year unless either the district or the town elects to not extend the agreement and notices the other party in writing on or before March 1st at the end of that fiscal year. So in other words, this is an agreement that will never put us into a position where, um, where we're in the final fiscal year of the agreement and we need to get a new agreement signed and agreed to in time for the budget vote um, and in time for people to plan for for school and for capacity and for, for everything else come September. So this agreement essentially says we're always going to have at least two years to re-figure out something if, if it's necessary, uh, which seems like a prudent way to both show commitment from the district as well as commitment from the towns to the um, length of the relationship and it gives us better ability to plan um, so that we can figure out capacity and other things and they can figure out where kids are headed and how to go about it. Regina. Can I, I just want to note because we're looking at the packet but you're focusing on New Ashford now but the changes you just Her itemized are also Hancock. in the Hancock one Correct. Now. So that will be a different. So yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a nuanced situation in that um, Hancock I believe has already accepted the Agreement. I don't have a signed one back from okay, either town. No. No. Okay. Um, so if we, we we have one that might already be in space there with them approving it, but this this agreement that is updated for Hancock, the two changes. No. Oh, uh, sorry to say, interrupt. So yeah. when this agree, sorry, this agreement went to the two towns the way it was, and that um, Peter Dillon had kicked it back to me with two questions. One was the cost for special education. So they they don't have the new one with the changes of us backing out those costs. Yeah. Right. My this notation was just that we're yes. making the same changes yes. with regards Both. to that's special correct. education yeah. and the yes. costs. Yes. Yes. Hand yeah. They'll be going. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's right. They kicked back the question and this addressed their question. The changes to the Hancock agreement from the one that we had previously voted and approved would be um, making sure that we back out transportation and special education costs per pupil that are included in the DESE published figure. Um, the new language within six around the details of how special education costs will be billed. And then again, nine, which automatically extends the agreement at the close of each fiscal year by another year so that we've always got two years of runway. Uh, those are the changes there. So further, details comments discussions uh, I'll just say for the record that I, I think most of us found the arguments and the pleas of the parents of students at Lanesboro Elementary pretty compelling and I think at the end of the day if we approve this we've given New Ashford you know what it has asked us for and I hope that the town will support its parents and its students as well by you know going along with this and and uh, that we end up remaining a community and that they support it as well. And the, the other thing that I'll toss into the discussion here is that, is that th this is an agreement that for, for those who are concerned about quote unquote getting to the per pupil cost, this gets there and it gets there in a finite amount of time. So it's not, it's not going to drag out 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, 
then part two is this agreement has, you know, it's it's been painstakingly created to satisfy, I think, the needs of everybody to be able to plan ahead, to be able to um, show mutual commitment and uh, work together for many years to come. So I'm hoping we're going to be in good stead with it. I, I agree with what Chris and Joe have said. I would have, I think, preferred a five-year contract rather than a three-year contract, but I don't feel that strongly. Got it. Um, Jen, did you want to come on up to the to the microphone and just let, let us? We, most of us know who you are, but just let us know who you are. And Jennifer Welch, um, New Ashford resident, mom of four, three at soon to be Mount Greylock, and one at Lanesboro Elementary. Uh, also a member of the New Ashford School Committee, but I have no. I'm not acting on that behalf at the moment. Um, I just want to thank you very much and reiterate, reiterate what Chris said. Thank you for being open to renegotiate. And I, too, hope that the town of New Ashford is as supportive and moving in the same direction as, as we all seem to be. Um, one question, because I did see the original contract before you made these changes, and I had the question, previous, previous contracts were between the school committee of New Ashford and the last I saw of the contract it said the town of New Ashford and the transition committee so I just wanted that clarification made if that needs to be altered to be the school committee of New Ashford I know yeah. the previous it is, it is tuition good. agreements were with the town of Lane with were with the Lanesboro school committee so I just wanted to clarify that uh, we're going to reconfirm re that, but I, I believe that our council had indicated that legally, actually, the agreement should be between the, the us as a as a school committee and the town, because the town is the is the financial and legal steward of the of the children. But I, I will take that up. I will go back to our council and say, multiple people have asked that question, and let's make sure we've got it. But I'll get back to you. I believe I've already asked the question a couple times, but I'll confirm it. Um, but it's it's a, I, I know that others on the committee have kind of seen a, seen a nodding of heads, like, "Yep, that looks strange to me." But I'll so I will go back and double check. Um, and worst case, we've we've got another meeting next week, so we can if we need to make a quick change, we can make a quick change. Uh, come on up and yeah. JJ Filio. I have two elementary school children, uh, actually that split time between New Ashford and Lanesboro. But my question is, if for whatever reason the town of New Ashford does not approve this proposal, uh, and a parent so chooses to send or still wants their child to go to Lanesboro or Mount Greylock, is there an option for parents of that town? to pay the difference between the agreed upon price and and what the ultimate decision is in the contract? The, the, the answer is no, a, a, a school district cannot have a tuition agreement essentially between itself and an individual family. Okay. But, but you could choice, I mean that's the option is mm -hmm. if there were choice slots open you could apply for choice from another town, whether you have a tuition agreement or not. Okay, that's correct. But choice is a lottery, and we just, yeah. That's why I said apply. Right, but, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They don't have a school No, they can't, because they don't have a school system. They can, then regulations mm -hmm. around choice have changed for K to six, yeah. So mm -hmm. they can choice. Yeah. You can apply for choice. They have to have one, but it doesn't make New Ashford exempt from utilizing school choice, and Rob O'Donnell had confirmed that through DESE. Okay. Correct. But they couldn't choice here if we had a tuition agreement. But oh, they can choice. Okay. But, but they have no, to have an no. agreement with some. If we have a tuition agreement in place, they can't choice instead. Right. Dead. Correct. If there's a tuition agreement in place, they, they can't can go choice somewhere else. Right. But right. they were saying if they didn't. Right. Agree if we did have, have the agreement. But yes. If, if right. they don't agree so to, to have a tuition agreement here, 
do they legally have to agree with another district? Yes, so the right. national law does require the town of New Ashford right. to have a tuition agreement right. to educate their children. Right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Any other, Steve, you had mentioned an interest in, in five years. I think so far we've, our council had indicated three years is a far more standard right. approach. Um, our previous agreement that we had approved was three years. Right. My feeling is that we we call it good enough, and perhaps right. in the future right. we talk about something else. But uh, does anybody have? I'll move that we accept the tuition agreements as uh, newly written and in our package. With is it? Do we have them both? Are we doing both New African handcuffs? Yes. yes. With, town of Hancock and the town of New Ashford, with the one caveat being we'll confirm whether the signatory is the town or the school committee. I'll second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you all for your persistence. Okay. Um, preliminary very preliminary discussion of 2018-2019 school calendar. Um, it's a complicated issue this year. Yes. It's a complicated issue because it is subject to negotiation and negotiations are ongoing. Um, but you know, we, we would traditionally have started thinking about this a little bit earlier. And um, I think to whatever extent we can, we need to force the, force the issue to try to get that doable here but it is, is it, it is yeah. work your work day is is an, is in negotiation and it's tied to a financial package so um, I don't know where that is on the agenda it's not subcommittee work so um, I mean this would be the perfect time for Chris to give his update because we don't need to go into exact but that's not yeah, I mean, we, we, in terms of well, on the negotiation so over the start of the school year, I mean, it is, the teachers consider it an economic issue, and so they're, you know, tying it to all the other economic issues like salary and insurance and longevity and those type of things. We can ask next time whether maybe we can carve out, you know, the school year and just talk about that, but when it you know, the, the, the schools have different numbers of days. And so somebody's, one of the schools or two of the schools are going to be changing the number of days they're in session. And, you know, Williamstown, as I understand it, has an early release Wednesday. I don't know whether it's every week or, mm -hmm. or frequently. And that's part of the school year there. And so that's part of the negotiation too. And I think it would be a little naive for us to expect them to say, okay, we're just going to work on this calendar and agree with you guys on a calendar when we don't know, we, haven't, we have no finality on salary insurance. Um, so in terms of the further update that I won't give later in the agenda, <laughs> we had a meeting again today, just a preparation meeting. We canceled our bargaining meeting and had a preparation meeting and are coming very close and have told the teachers that we hope to have a full economic proposal or a nearly full economic proposal for our April 10th meeting which is our next scheduled meeting and I think based on today's meeting we're going to get there so we're going to be presenting to the teachers a you know an economic package it's going to be a lot for them just because it's a lot that involves all those issues I just mentioned and a few more and so it's not going to happen overnight, and but but we'll be starting, you know, the negotiations over the most important aspects very soon. And um, it wasn't easy to get there to even, you know, just to digest all of that stuff and and look at all the differences between the schools and come to something that we felt comfortable proposing. But we're nearly there, and, um, and so we'll be putting that on the table very soon, and then. We'll report back to the school committee when, you know, and go into executive session when we have things that we need approval for. And, um, but I don't know about that. You know, we can ask. We can talk to them about it. And uh, we can talk, you know, through Kim to our principals as well about some ideas for it. But, you know, I'd love to tell you that I think we're going to be able to get to a school year before these other things. 
I don't know. I, I, I'm not optimistic about that. Well, largely, it's on an agenda here because I know it's impacting our, our principal's yeah. planning right. ability. Um, Maybe we could pick a starting is day. Public calling in and saying, hey, why, why, why are you guys so lazy? Why aren't you coming out with a calendar? <laughs> and um, and the answer is we're not. And and we're, we're I mean, I respect your... See, I may be naive about there. it, but maybe we can talk about a starting date and not talk about all the other issues and come to an agreement on that. But I don't know, does that really help? Does maybe just the starting date yeah. would help, yeah. even if you don't know all the other things? Yes. All right, so we'll, we'll talk to them. We'll mention that and see whether we can, you know, maybe they'll be willing to talk about a starting date as a separate pullout item that we can do more quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Remind Joel. Joelle. We can make a date. Can I say one thing about a starting date? Um, as long as you're not going to impact our bargaining position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Joe, I do have. No. No. No, I, kn I know okay. what that is. Okay. You can ask him later. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You are not subject to this beautiful open meeting law with. with yeah. Anything else on that topic? That's it okay. for the negotiation of All right. And I know that the three of you wanted to be able to to get back to your planning for tomorrow. So um, by all means. Thank you. I just, I'm, I'm just for the negotiating piece of things, I think that everyone has to understand because it's impacting, it's not an impact of everything, but because the process is, they're, they're negotiating as a whole now. So the MTA is making decisions at a whole. So Mary has a schedule that has to be built, but because it's a change in an existing contract, it impacts that. Joelle has a request that impacts West, but it impacts now the whole MTA. So the, the conversations have to be about how is this going to impact the entire bargaining unit of the new, if they all meld together, the new Magia, you know, and so, um, you know the requests to for that they that they have with the calendar i have those i can forward them um, mary's scheduling you know we have that we forwarded it on and so they're taking requests as a whole so it's just it's different than how the three of them have had to function before and so um, but we are getting there um, but you know the mta has been clear that anything that's going to impact well anything is going to be discussed now at the the new negotiating table so all right. Should we move on in the agenda? Okay. Uh, discussion of draft lease agreements. We have drafts um, that were included in sure, your. Can I just interrupt for a second? Sure. I need to excuse myself, but before I go, could I skip to an announcement? Is uh, that okay? Anybody opposed to that? Nope. Nope. So, yes. um, in case you haven't heard, our esteemed chair has been named one of the 40 under 40 in uh, Berkshire County, which is the Berkshire um, Community College Foundation. And um, there's a piece about it in the Eagle. And the panel of judges, this is the criteria. For career path, how fast has the individual risen? How unusual is their ascendancy? And then commitment to community, does the individual volunteer and in what capacity? So congratulations. Thank you. Um, it's really great, and um, there's a very nice picture of all all the 40 under 40s, cool. and um, yeah, so I just think 40. it was great. <laughs> it's 40 under 40 honoring community professionals that will shape Berkshire County's future. Good job, Just being under 40 deserves <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely, I'm just scraping in, I'm just scraping in, but thank you, thank you. All right. Um, Thank you, Karen. Hope you feel better. Seventy over seventy. I can okay. speak to the leases. Yes, leases. Okay. So the lease agreements are in the packet. Um, we had, I had worked on them with um, Chris very early on. Then with Russell Dupre, I've then sent them back to the town's KP Law Office has looked at it. So the Lanesboro, you're seeing the red lines. I sent the red lines to the to town manager of Williamstown. He saw the red lines. He accepted the red lines. So the Williamstown lease is in a format that is, if acceptable to us, we then bring it to the to, to the town for them to sign off on the Lanesboro ones. Um, we have to accept the red lines in order to then accept the Williamstown ones. So that's why one is before the other. So. 
I don't expect that everyone has had the chance to look at this, but KP Law, which is the law firm that represents the town of Lanesboro, um, they are the ones that went through and made made the edit. So um, I looked at it, and it's manageable from our my perspective. But again, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't do lease agreements, and so. Um, I don't know our next steps, but this was what we one of the things that we're working on when I'm meeting with the two towns, knowing that this needs to be in um, in place for July one. Um, so, I, you guys can take time, you know, to digest, and then we bring it back to the next meeting. Mm -hmm. But focus on what the red lines are because the red lines were accepted by Lansboro. But if we don't accept the red lines, then we have to cross out on Williamstown ones what what we were recommending as changes. So, that's where we are with the lease agreements. Thank you. You're welcome. For being on top. Now, yeah, so these need to be executed prior to July 1, um, but you've got the drafts here, digest them, and then at a, another committee meeting coming up, um, we will be, uh, we'll eventually be voting to authorize us to enter into them. Um, and uh, it doesn't come before town meeting. That already happened during special town meeting authorizing. Um, the town of Williamstown to enter into and the town of Lanesboro to enter into um, their lease agreements. But this is kind of a just a necessary step in the process. And thank you to the superintendent for moving us on that with both town halls. Anything on it right now? So right now it's mostly it needed to get into the packet. We needed committee members to start looking at it. We'll keep on going. So I think Chris, you were the last one that lays up, laid eyes on it. Russell saw it. It's going yeah, to it KP. Uh, it, so if you just want to focus on the red line when you have a chance, no, and um, to, yeah, yeah, and then so great, great. Perfect. Anything else on that item? Okay. Uh, negotiations. Is there anything else that you wanted to? Nothing else, uh, Regina. Right nothing. Okay. Again. No, I, like I said, I just wanted the principals to understand that like the process has changed and I understand that like we still have schools to move forward, but the MTA is meeting with us as they, you know, said and you know, so it's just it's a little different for us and so I do have one thing. We have started with the ESPs as That's well. That's correct, the paras. That's right, the, yeah. We the have. support unit. So, so we had a good first meeting with the uh, you know, the paras and the custodians and are hopeful that one will move along pretty quickly. And Regina and Kim remind me about the you know school year opening day so that I remember to bring that up at our negotiation session. Got it. Anything else? Good. Um, superintendent search um, next Thursday evening, fifth. Our our meeting will be used uh, for those finalist interviews and selection. So um, that's the only update there that I've got. Good. Fifth. Anything else? Oh. I think we're going to review the questions. We won't hear the questions until that meeting. That's correct. So we would Why? not normally or ever reveal all the questions to the to everybody in the world prior. No, not even to the, to the interviews. The, not even to the committee. Well, with the committee, the problem is, is it would need to happen in an open meeting in public. Right. So people have sent questions to me, and I have the MASC questions, and then. Uh, but I can I can tell you, not a single question is has been removed from what was submitted. So we're in good shape, as far as <laughs> if it, it, if you know what you sent me, it'll be there. Six o'clock, the fifth. Yes, six o'clock start time. That's open yeah. to the public. Oh yeah, yes. it's it's an open meeting. That's that's by law. That's that's the way it works. How long will they each be? About an hour. That's the target. Okay. Okay. I'll be here. Anything else on that topic? Do, ex do we expect to vote that day, or would we take yes. it on? Yeah. Yep. Do we vote in so, open session? Or do we yep. Vote? It's an open session. No, I mean, do we go in executive session and talk about it? It's right in open session. So we have the interview. Yeah. <clears throat> then we don't have to go into executive session to discuss You're not personality. Allowed. We're not allowed to by law. Welcome to municipal committee life. It's brutal, but... Yeah. So it works. <laughs> I have no problem with it. I mean, yeah. I, I would just think that that if you, my understanding of executive session would be that the reason you go into executive session is it not it doesn't embarrass me, but it's an embarrassment of the people that that are being interviewed. That you would think that 
I'm almost positive that when you talk about personalities, et cetera, you go into an executive session. Yep. I don't think you do that in open session. S Steve, and then th this is something that we can, Al, you and I can take it offline after the meeting and we can look so at the laws I've, together. I've emailed but Dorothy Presser at the MASC precisely about that as to are there any conditions and under what conditions could we go into executive session? And uh, she has, you know, basically, you know, said what was said here, but has also said that we should, you know, talk to district council and just confirm a few things. And so we'll, we'll make sure that for the meeting on the fifth, we know precisely. But you know, as, as Joe said, you, know, we are supposed to do our deliberations in public yeah. with the information that is publicly provided. Yeah. Uh, individuals are allowed to reach out to school committee members with information. You okay. mean individuals, not the candidates, but individuals in the public? In, individuals in the public. It, it's the, it, it all happens in open session. Yeah. That's, it, that's law, that's the, way it, in open session. that's the way it is. Um, okay. And then it's, you didn't list um, for, oh, I guess policy is not a subcommittee. It is not. It's. Um, I usually have a report from the superintendent where I would right, report on right, that. But, but I we are that's trying to keep this. Yeah, I didn't sorry. See a report, but that's you can do other hours. business because. Yeah. Yes. So go. All right. Okay. Any announcements or upcoming events of interest? No. Um, other business. I did not anticipate an update from policy, but if you'd like to give a yes, quick well update. Yes. Well, this is within forty-eight hours uh, because Kim and I did meet within forty-eight hours of now. Yes. Um, who was the representative from MAC? Pat Korea. And it was an extremely productive meeting. You know, Kim was extremely well prepared in terms of boom, 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 just going through everything. <laughs> Took us about 90 minutes to go through A through L. And we will be advancing a couple of things at some point in the near future, just aligning all of the district to mesh with MESC, as well as taking into account the unique specialties that make us us. Okay. okay. So policy is done. It's ready to come forward. I just sent the edits. Steve was in there. So we can that. throw some hats up in the air, some confetti. We can. Yeah, I got another Put check. I've got my one. bucket right. list is getting smaller. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, upcoming meetings tomorrow night, Williamstown Finance Committee. That is posted as a transition committee meeting in case mm -hmm. people want to want to come. But um, I think we're in good shape as far as the presentation con is concerned. April second, uh, Landsborough Finance Committee. Same thing. We will post that um, in case we get a quorum. And then April 5th, next week, next Thursday, is our next meeting of the Transition Committee. And then after that, we'll have a two-week break. Uh, we don't need the executive session, correct? We do not. Not for negotiations. Would anybody like to... Steve has moved. I second it. Al has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Um, aye. 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 We're adjourned at 7.59 p.m. I have concern or I have concern.